Okay. This is the tale of Stuart McDermott, a tall, wiry boy of little conversation, but plenty thought. Thought, not lonely, but always on his own. Not depressed, but reflective and gentle in his manner. Like most of the younger men on the island, he dreamt every day of leaving to start life on the mainland. There was only himself and three other males surviving on the mull, for in the previous nine months, thirteen men had died. Thirteen men had died. When he imagined life on the mainland, he saw himself striding into Thompson's heel bar and demanding that his shoes be reshod on one of their complicated revolving machines, or whistling at the lasses as they gathered around the bollards preventing vehicles entering the housing estate. He even saw himself sat in Coster coffee, drinking hot chocolate, and been handed the Wi-Fi code by the lassie with tats to spare. (laughs) (laughs) Now, (laughs) Now, for several years, Stuart had been researching the geology of the small island (laughs) and inquiring of the older generation about the infamous... Hellpot Hall. It was reputed to be the home of an unusual beast with whom a deal could be struck to escape the clutches of the godforsaken isle. His research had led him to a small <laughs> His research had led him to a small inlet, confusingly absent from all maps and records, and fenced off with barbed wire on which locals had hung various charms and warning bursts. <laughs> but his desire to leave was strong. <laughs> and so and so he tunnelled under the barrier using the egg, using the exhaust pipe from a Lambretta scooter that had dropped out of a plane and landed on the moors, killing a man on impact. As he clambered down the hinny to the entrance of the Hellpot Hole, he felt a fear and foreboding usually reserved for those who dared to stroke a bull's bowels with a fistful of nettles. Entering the cave, he was immediately struck by the spent stench of boiled onions, and sure enough, he quickly saw a figure bent over a large cooking pot, stirring onions in a rolling boil of water. The figure was naked but covered in hair, a branch snapped, beneath his feet, and the figure slowly turned its head toward him. Stuart made to run, but his feet were now stuck by a sticky substance that was leaking from the base of the onion pot. The beast was now fully turned, and Stuart whimpered as he saw that it had the face of Benny Hill. (laughs) The face... (laughs) The face of Benny Hill! The face of Benny Hill! Do you like boiled onions? said the beast. I fucking do. In fact, I can he get enough of the wee sweet bastards. The beast plucked an onion out of the pot and held it unscalded in his hand as he approached Stuart with the onion held the front of him. I sense you want to leave the island, boy. I, I do, said Stuart. You'll be wanting to visit Thompson's to have a key cut on their complicated machine. Another such mainland nonsense, I guess. Aye, that's right, said Stuart. We'll take a bite of the onion child. I will assure you passage through Hellpot and on to a series of chambers to the mainland. But there is a price to be paid. I'll pay that price, said Stuart, and he grabbed the onion and bat onto it. As he chewed, the beast held up a gilded mirror for Stuart to gaze upon. And what he saw brought about his instant demise, simply from the shock of it. He had the face of Louis Suarez. The face of Louis Suarez. The face of Louis Suarez. And that's the end of the tale of Stuart. So that's my Scottish tale, Andy. Mm, you know, you said song. At yeah. At the beginning there. Yeah. It, it wasn't really a song, was it? 
No, but I always imagine it like in my mind. It's got one of those. Is it Harmonian or whatever? Be at, like, or right. Yeah. Behind it, like who's the fellow who used to do it? Oscar. Oscar. I have a cutler. I have a cutler. Right. That's how I think of it. So, I suppose yeah. If you could, uh, you put some of that on for me, then I reckon if, you'd have a song on your hand. 